me right now. This is me trying to figure out why on earth my internet is so, so, so terribly inconsistent. Um, apologies for the little dip there. Uh, Lord, I'm losing track. Every time that happens, I always lose track of where I was at. I really should start just writing this stuff up. Writing this stuff up in a, like, on a piece of paper and then being able to just continue off from where I started. Or stopped, rather, since my internet went goofy. Anyway, I believe I was talking about lighting on, um, on Isaac's suit, which I, th which I think is really neat. Um, the sort of purveyance of little effects like that, they, they really do help to capture detail in a game and really just add to that immersive feeling, that sort of really deep, dark, kind of cool experience you start to have. You, you start to notice little things like that, and it, it really adds to the world that you're exploring that you're currently sort of virtually inhabiting. And of course, actually, um, I mentioned too, obviously, the fact that Isaac's head moves left and right, left and right, up, down. It actually, in a way, base. I believe you could do this better with a mouse, technically, because the dead zone on a joystick is really funky in this game. Uh, but you'll notice that his head moves uh, in accordance with where you, the player, choose to look. Um, really, really small detail right there um, that you just do not see often, at, if at all, in, in quite a few games. I know, if I'm not mistaken, the Halo series was very well known for this, and it's a first-person shooter, so you would only ever notice it technically in a multiplayer match um, with other human players, uh, whether locally or online, you would, you would notice that the, the multiple, multiple rainbow-colored Master Chiefs running around acting like fools. Uh, they would actually look at you. If they saw you, you could actually notice that their head was looking at you. It was really neat from just the perspective of like being behind a sniper scope and looking at someone from halfway across the stage and then all of a sudden they look towards you and you're like, oh crap, they see me. So this game's got that to some degree, which I think is really neat. Again, small detail. I don't believe it takes that much animating or coding prowess to really do that. I think it's just more often than not whether or not the whether or not the designers or developers really give a shit. And uh, in this case, thankfully, it looks like the Redwood guys actually, well, they did care. Right on, okay, so... Your stasis module should be able to help you with that arm mechanism. There we go. Game telling me yet again uh, what to do. Not really trusting me to figure this out by my own, based solely on the actually fairly well-designed contextual clues they add in this room. Keep in mind, I, uh, I know pretty sure there's some pickups for stasis charges, I believe. Um, there is clearly a machine here not working right. Um, we've got this main panel, which engages this claw. And then we've got a main panel here that would activate both. We can clearly see that both claws need to be activated to do something with it. Uh, here's an enemy. Exciting stuff. Okay, so we've got all this. We've got context clues. We've got that there are clearly two different claws that need to be attached. One, in fact, is attached no problem. The other one, we're assuming, will do the same. Probably won't, though, based solely on the fact that this is a semi-puzzle. Uh, and lo and behold, it probably won't hold. We can see it's got... Ah, yes. Not holding, so it tells us we're going to have to slow it down and make sure that we... Uh, Activate the tram repair service while both arms are attached, etc. It's, it's kind of a kind of a pretty corny, cheesy puzzle, actually. It's it's fairly basic. I guess they kind of throw it in there just to sort of. I mean, they already introduced it with the door malfunctioning earlier, but I guess this kind of does a slightly better job of it. Plus, it adds to the whole. Ooh, look, scary monsters, wasting a bunch of ammo there. Um, can't help but do so half the time, though. I've noticed if there's one thing I can say about the shooting mechanics in the game, the aiming's not really my problem, though I've read some people have issue with the way the game handles the aiming, uh, specifically with a joystick. Uh, with keyboard and mouse, it doesn't seem to be much issue, but I do, in many respects, prefer to use game pads for games that were, in fact, designed primarily for consoles. It kind of makes a little more sense to me to use a game pad, but that's, that's my opinion. Only my opinion, not the cold hard fact of the case. Many people have differing opinions on that. However, um, I will say that beyond the aiming with a joypad, which is kind of iffy, again better on a keyboard and mouse technically, 
A problem is actually the actual hitbox zones, uh, specifically for cutting off limbs. The game is very, very, very inconsistent about that. Um, generally speaking, on the Necromorphs themselves, especially like the uh, the the vertically oriented Necromorphs,